Q&A time. Q&A time. So I asked the awesome writing community on Twitter for some questions, and uh, here's what I got. Number one. A.M. Hounchill asks, why should I help you? Well, A.M., if it isn't my old bad book ideas nemesis, when's our next duel, A.M.? You know, of all the people I expect wouldn't help me, you're the first on that list. I'm watching you. Number two. A.M. Hounchell also asks, in theory, could I use pickle juice as ink to scent my books? I see that you're already starting to not help me, A.M. Pickle juice to scent your books. I mean, in theory. Is that what you asked? It is what you asked. So, in theory, yeah? Pickles have a very strong smell, I guess. But would you be able to read ink made simply out of pickle juice? Actually, that's a really good question, because isn't invisible ink like lemon juice? But then would you have to burn the pages to read whatever you wrote on it? It seems very... It just seems like a lot of work, AM. Why do you want your books to have a scent anyway? Why do you want your books to smell like pickles? Ew. Number three. I numbered them this time, so we're actually going to be okay. Also, they're categorized by persons. It's good. AM also asks, Would you recommend that everyone who writes have a rivalry like ours? Not mean, but something to encourage positive growth. Plus, someone to bounce ideas off of. Also, prepare to lose. I don't think I'm going to be the one losing, AM. And, uh, yeah. I'd say that everyone should have some sort of motivational partner who who just kind of says here's a challenge or uh hey that's kind of cool what you're doing over there and uh, it really seems to help out and we're very active on twitter with the bad book ideas hashtag and uh yeah i think i think it would be beneficial if everyone had someone like that maybe not for some personalities but for a lot of personalities that'd be good we're totally different number four A.M. Hounchell also asks, Why can't I steal your bones from my bone sculpture? That's probably too specific. Huh. What? Because they're still inside me, A.M. Unless you mean those other bones. But no, you can't have those either. What bone sculpture? What are you doing? I thought you were writing books. What have you done with your life? A.M., don't throw away your amazing books just to make a bone sculpture out of my bones. Why? A.M. Hounchell also asks, How many years should it take me to write the first page of my novel and like it? A.M., that really depends on, like, what you're writing and whether or not your personality type ever likes anything. Stop being a perfectionist. That's what it boils down to. Write it. Write some more stuff, come back. If you really, really don't like it, change it a little bit, but then just move on, you know? If the first page isn't good enough, either make a brand new draft, which, is it worth making a brand new draft? Fix it up a little bit and change the wording around, or write the next book, and in the next book, use whatever you learned to make a better first page. Just keep going. Don't look back. It's a trap. Number six. Did I even number number five? I can't even remember. At least they're numbered this time. A.M. Hounchell also asks, If you could make a pact with the devil to write twice as fast, would you? Huh. No. I don't... <laughs> pact with the devil. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh... If only the devil had told me I wouldn't be able to build up the motivation to write in the first place, I never would have made that pact. What? Number one. Oh crap, the numbers start over with the next person. Hakaius asks, Who decided that it made sense to put marks on a flat surface and call that communication? Um, nobody, Hakaius. Spoken language came first. And then the marks on the probably for counting objects for sales and taxes and stuff. Hakaius, writing started because of taxes. I'm sorry. Number two of the second part. Hakaius also asks, where did words even come from? Uh, 
linguistics will get back to you on that, Agaius. <laughs> I ask in the hard questions. Number three, B, B3. Hakaias also asks, how come it's so hard to learn another language? That actually all depends on the language and your skill level and like the algorithms that you've built up over time, the mnemonic devices that you use, and um, your native language. Some languages aren't hard at all to learn, like Esperanto if you're an English speaker, and Quechua is relatively easy to learn, but there's just not a lot of resources, so... I still want to get better at Quechua. Really cool language. Number four. Hakaius asks, how did you decide on Boone being a Gaboon snake? That's actually a really good question, Hakaius. Um, what he's asking, for anyone who's very confused by that question, is about my book, The War of Food. Uh, you can see the trailer here. Click click that card there and you'll, you'll see it. Um, the Boone... It is, it is, it, there's actually an interview section in the back of the book. If you'd like to read that, you can see the origins of a lot of the characters and a lot of the uh, events and how they developed over time. And uh, there's just this big interview with me and my dad in the back of the book. It's really good. Um, a few spoilers, probably. So you might not want to read it until you read the rest of the book, but it's definitely answered back there. Number five. Hakaius asks, why do you hate punctuation? Punctuation. Hakaius, I have a love-hate relationship with punctuation because sometimes people know how to use it and sometimes they don't. And I don't mean like people know how to use it well or not. I mean like people don't agree on the rules. And I don't mean like uneducated people. I mean people who make up the rules don't agree on the rules. There's multiple forms of rules for different punctuation methods, and it's different in every language, and it's different in different dialects of languages, and it's complicated, and it just shouldn't be. Let's just use whatever the heck we want to use. I prefer a minimalist style of punctuation where you use something simple and then ta-da. People, some people don't like it when you do question mark, exclamation mark. Some people do exclamation mark, question mark. I, some people say don't use either. Some people just say don't even use exclamation marks. I say don't use commas. Just rip all of the commas out of your manuscript. Don't do all of them. A lot of them would probably be okay, but not all of them. Anyways, the reason I hate it is because it doesn't make any sense, and it never will, because it's all made up crap that we just are forced to use for no apparent reason. Number six. Hakaius also asks, do you have any thoughts on Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guidebooks? Yes, they're amazing. I'm rereading them right now, actually out loud to my wife, and uh, man, great characters, great stuff. Don't know what the plot is, don't know what the point of the book is, but um, that's on purpose, and I like that. That's absurd comedy, and that's what I like to write, except I usually have a plot. It doesn't have a purpose, but it's, there's a plot. But the plot doesn't have a purpose, so then there's there. There's that. Number seven. I'm gonna stop asking questions. You keep making me color inside the lines. Where's the creativity? Hakai, yes, I, you don't have to stop asking questions. I just want you to stay with the topic. Where's the creativity? Well, wherever you want to put it. But it, it, this, this video was supposed to be about writing and like, I'm trying to figure out how to get the SEO stuff to work. I want to be found in the search engine, in the YouTube search engine. And I don't think that I'm going to be if I keep making Q&A videos about every single thing in existence all at once. Other than that, you can you can ask whatever you want. Just kind of stay within the topic, you know. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you know, I might have to start cutting some of your questions out. How do you like those beans, Achaius? Number eight. Achaius asks, I thought you were going to stop asking questions. Achaius asks, if you were offered an opportunity to be paid to write in an existing universe slash franchise, would you do it? I might, depending on my skill level at that time. Right now, I don't feel comfortable writing in anything besides my own universe... Um, franchise. That's a weird word to say for my stuff, but... Uh, 
If my skill level was better, I would totally write another book uh, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series, because that would be awesome. Um, somebody already did that after Douglas Adams died, and he did a very good job, Ian Colfer, and he wrote, uh, and another thing. I, I really liked it, and he was hoping, I think it was in the preface, that he was hoping um, people would, like, famous authors would continue to write a new one every year, and that didn't happen, and it's... It would have been really cool if that had happened. So, any any other universe or something, I don't think I would know enough about it. Well, maybe Dragon Ball. But probably not. I don't know if Dragon Ball... No. No. I'll just stick to my stuff. I want my stuff to be famous enough at some point. Uh... I say famous enough. I don't want it to be super famous, but I want it to be famous enough at some point that people like say, "Hey, hey, you gonna write another one of these?" Hey, yeah, 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 huh, huh? And I'd be like, "Yeah, okay." Number nine. That was number nine. Number one, because we're starting with a new person. Karen Faust asks, "What's that creepy spider in the backyard?" Um. Karen Faust is my wife, and there's creepy spiders in the backyard, and they are called Microthena spiders, and I call them Magrathean spiders because I'm a big Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy nerd, as you could probably tell from the rest of this video already. And uh, here's some footage. They're creepy. They only live a year. They're orb-weaving spiders. They weave their webs like every day or something, if I'm getting that right. And they look like the freaking devil. But. Good news, according to Wikipedia, they are completely harmless to humans, which is better than the Earth, which is only mostly harmless. Hitchhiker's Guide? You get it? You get it? Number one! That was the only question she had. Boyd A. Davis asks, Do you ever write in longhand, perhaps even with a fountain pen, on early drafts before moving to computer? I've been actually thinking about doing that for a long time now. The only problem is I haven't written by hand in so long that... Even just after one page, I get these massive... I just killed my keyboard. I get these massive hand cramps. And, uh... That's a problem if I want to keep going. Uh, also, I really don't like the idea that I can't... Erase something and easily and put like new sentence in or just kind of take a couple of words out and put new words in. I know I could scribble it out, but... Sometimes I do it multiple times. Sometimes I do it a lot. And... I just feel like it'd be easier to do on the computer, which it is. Uh, the other thing is my handwriting sucks, and I don't write very fast at this point, although I used to, but reading it was another story. My spelling is not as good when I'm writing by hand. That's a really weird thing, because like when I'm typing on the computer, my spelling is fine. When I'm writing by hand, it's bad, and it's not the spell check. I thought of that. It's just, like, my hand doesn't remember how to spell words anymore when writing with a pen. That doesn't make any sense, but that's how it works. Something about the mind. The mind is a weird, weird thing. Anyways, no, I haven't done it yet. I might in the future, though. Number one. I'm really going to have to change this numbering system next time. This is confusing. Rebecca Froling asks, Do you ever write in costume? And if not, why not? And maybe you should start and post pictures. I don't, but that is the most ingenious marketing plan I've ever heard of. I, I'm kind of ashamed I didn't think of that first. That means I have to be able to afford costumes, doesn't it? Can I, like, show up at the writing party and just write as myself? And then post pictures? Is that... Is that not allowed? I'm broke. Number one. Yeah, we're back to number one. Laura Ruth Loomis asks, Where did you hide my pen? <laughs> I can't tell you, Laura. I, uh... <laughs> forgot. Um... Sorry. Number two. Laura also asks, why does my manuscript not write itself when I ask nicely? I don't know, Laura. That That's interesting to me because I've taken the other route and I just curse at my manuscript to write itself and it doesn't. And it really worries me that if neither tactic works, we're just gonna have to write them ourselves. Or we could pay someone else to do it. 
Ghostwriter's great idea, and we just put them up on Amazon and make a whole bunch of money. Some people do that, and it really bothers me. Number three. Laura also asks, and the whole business of flattening wood pulp into paper, how did anyone even come up with that? I think that was connected to a different question, but it was, I don't know. It was probably a little kid and they were like, look, I'm going to put a whole bunch of wood into water and let it soak for forever. Oh, look, it's yucky. I'm going to flatten it out and let it dry. Oh, look, paper. I'm going to... And then we get the whole ink thing. I don't know. Number one. We're breaking the number one record in this one. The Writer's Path asks, what's a deal breaker for you when reading a story? For example, would it be the book having a Mary Sue character or purple prose? No, I think for me it's... For me, a deal breaker when reading a book is like if it's disgusting or if it's aiming to disgust me or make me sad or if it's aiming to like make me feel something too hard. Like a lot of books try too hard to make you feel stuff or to just gross you out or things like that. I don't, I don't really like that kind of uh, kind of thing. I, I'm really picky in the types of books I read, so I, I've got a lot of deal breakers. Number one. Chris is a writer person, asks, why is purple prose written in black ink and not purple? Why call it purple prose? Um, I'm going to make this one up because I don't actually know the answer, but it sounds right, and uh, I'm, I don't really care about looking stuff up at this point. Uh, I would say that purple prose is not written in purple ink because, well, that's expensive. And uh, black ink is it's just you're printing in black and white is what you're doing. But purple prose, uh, purple, the color of royalty, prose being the manner in which you're writing, so it's like flourishy, royal, pretty, it's, uh, it's like when someone wants to write with a purple pen. Last one, N number one, last number one. Arlen Lake asks, exactly how fast would my quill need to be writing in order for me to achieve flight? A, that was a really hard sentence to read out. Here's a couple of outtakes. My quill need to be, f will need to be writing in order to, eh, quill need to be writing in order for me to, it B, um, really freaking fast. Usually birds have more than one feather to take flight with, so if you're only going to be using one feather, you better be getting your money's worth out of that feather. You better be writing really freaking fast. I'd say at least 500 words per minute, somewhere in that ballpark. And that's all the answers you get in today, because I've run out of questions. If you like the video, hit like, uh, hit subscribe if you want to see more. Blow that notification bell out of the water, because we can't have those floating around, can we? And, uh... Leave a comment down below if you have a question for next week. Next week's is going to be ignore the random cut and me hitting the microphone. Next week's topic is going to be uh, writer's block. So ask me all of your questions about writer's block, whatever you want to ask, and I will answer them. Uh, so until then, I will see you then. That...